Um, cool. All right. I was hoping we would have that many when I asked how many would have applied, but that's all right. Yeah, I know. Me too. That's, I mean, you really got nothing to lose um, by applying to the Zip Launchpad, but I'll talk a little bit more about what you can get out of it. Cool. All right. So, uh, Tanya, thank you for having me. Nice to meet you, everybody in the room here. Um, my name is Doug Brantley. I'm coming to you from not literally from the Zip Launchpad Prototyping Lab, but um, virtually from the Zip Launchpad Prototyping Lab. In a better world, we're going to be able to do this workshop in person in the lab um, or in the Zip Launchpad. And hopefully, uh, some of you guys will actually be able to take advantage of some of these resources and some of these uh, prototyping techniques that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so today I'm just going to go over a quick workshop about what we do in the lab, um, talk about some of the prototyping philosophy we use, talk about some of the product development philosophy we use. Well, actually, I got a little intro slide. I'll give you a little intro about everything we do, talk about why prototype. We'll do a little prototyping exercise real quick. So I hope to get a little bit hands on uh, so you guys don't have to uh, just stare at me for an hour. Um, and then we'll talk about what is a prototype and how maybe you can get one for the idea or the enterprise that you are interested in starting. So oh, nice to meet you all again. My name is Doug Brentley. I'm the lab manager at the Rapid Prototyping Lab at the Zip Launchpad. Uh, you can kind of see, I have another picture of it in just a moment here. We can kind of see it in my virtual background here. Uh, we have, uh, so I'm an SDSU alumni, I graduated about three years ago with a mechanical engineering degree, computer science minor, just very, very technical. Um, I'm a former Zip startup. The Zip startup didn't quite work out, but I've been helping Zip Launchpad teams with a startup or startup and product development uh, work ever since. It's been a really phenomenal experience, a really phenomenal organization to be a part of. Um, I also have my uh, Calendly on here, right here. If you guys ever wanted to book 30 minutes to either talk about product development, uh, product management, or just engineering in general, uh, that's an available resource that we have to everybody on campus as well. Uh, so who is the Zip Launchpad? So I understand that probably about half of you guys know what it is already, but the Zip Launchpad is an incubator and entrepreneurial community that supports San Diego State University innovators and aspiring entrepreneurs to launch viable startups. Uh, we've launched 28 successfully launched teams so far. Uh, we've probably helped over 300 individual unique ideas and unique teams. Uh, we've been around for, I think, eight to 10 years or so, something like that. Um, and it's, and even, you know, just being involved, uh, I've seen probably over five or 600 ideas come through the program in terms of uh just pure ideas that we've talked about with either teams that have applied you know through events or through a hackathon or something like that um so it's it's a pretty cool place to get involved with at the very least you get to see a lot about what people what kind of business ideas people are thinking uh you get to understand you know how uh a, an idea can look big or small from different contexts and you also get to see and perceive how judges uh, you know, experienced and seasoned entrepreneurs and, you know, investors or venture capitalists, you know, interpret ideas and the way that they approach entrepreneurship. Uh, so it's a pretty phenomenal organization to be involved with altogether. Uh, some of the resources that are available to the teams in the Zip Launchpad, uh, this is going to be the best deal you'll ever get in town. So non-equity funding of up to $10,000 is available to the startups in the program. We have also legal help uh, with both for intellectual property and corporate legal help. So we have IP attorneys um, and patent lawyers. And then we also have corporate attorneys who can help you with turning your uh, whatever business you are thinking about running into a legal entity. Um, and I guess really like in addition to that, we also have banking experts who can help you set up a business bank account and understand the taxes and implications of the legal entities that you create, uh, which is all really, really helpful when you're kind of in the early stages early stages and have no idea what to do with your idea and your company. Uh, we also have a 24 hour working space in a pre and post COVID world co out or a co working space. So it's a really nice place to hold professional meetings. It's a very nice place to work. It's ac it's accessible to you with a swipe access 24 seven. if you're a zip launchpad startup um, and it's just a really great space to work from. And then we also have mentorship from industry experts. So we have people who are in sales and marketing. We have people who are domain experts. We have CTOs. We have um, venture capital investment experts. We have experts in 
um, a variety of engineering roles and software roles, um, all volunteering their time uh, to give back to the startups uh, just because they experienced and received help when they were launching their ventures or their startups or operating their, out of their companies uh, years ago. Uh, and so that's all free through the Zip Launchpad. And then the last thing we have is prototyping help uh, or prototyping tools and prototyping help. Uh, and that's basically what I help startups with. So you don't even necessarily need to be a technical co-founder to launch a technical product. You could launch a hardware or a software product without being a designer, an engineer, or any of that. We supplement quite a lot of the uh, work that's necessary in the very, very early stages to go from idea to actual product. Um, and we actually are going to open that uh, resource to you guys, too, even though you're not necessarily involved with Zip Launchpad this semester. So I'll talk a little bit about that in just a bit. Um, but the takeaway here is that all of this is available to you as a student uh, launching a company or launching a startup with Zip Launchpad for free. The Zip Launchpad takes absolutely no equity in the startups that we launch. We offer all of these resources for $0. Uh, we're able to do that because the Zip Launchpad is mostly donor funded by investors, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and other seasoned and experienced entrepreneurs who have seen and done uh, the startup route before and want to give back and hopefully see the next wave of entrepreneurs come out of SDSU. So hopefully you guys are some of those people who will take advantage of that. So this is the lab that we work out of. Um, it's uh, pretty cool, it's about a thousand square feet. Um, it's um, maybe a little bit less, but it's it's got 3D printers, it's got CNC's, it's got uh, laser cutters, it's got electronics uh, workstation, it's got design workstations, uh, it's got material storage, you know, it's it's got, and most of all what it's got is just space where you can go and work on an idea, a technical idea, whether you are a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer, or you have those skill sets on your team. Uh, a lot of the time, what you really just need is workspace to actually, you know, build whatever uh, first version of the product you're interested in building. Uh, we usually are able to help teams or founders go from everything from idea all the way up to low volume production. And then we also have resources to move those startup teams off to uh, larger scale and mass scale production. But, you know, we could, we could basically help uh, the startups in the program go up to even, you know, 100 or 200 units on a 3D printer if they were gonna sell something here on campus or in San Diego. Um, and then eventually the goal is to scale that up, you know, post either uh, investment or post graduation as, you know, a team goes on and runs the company autonomously. Um, and then it, the lab is not just me either. So we actually have a set of interns, uh, all mostly technical or no, all technical. Uh, we have mechanical engineering skill sets, computer science, graphic design, uh, and then we rotate in some other skill sets here and there, depending on the need of the teams in the program. Um, and we're able to basically help with uh, just a variety of, a variety of um, work, such as landing pages, uh, logo design, um, you know, brochure development and flyer development or, you know, marketing and branding, uh, as well as product design and product development, both in the software space, uh, electrical space and uh, hardware space. Uh, I see a question here from Cameron. Do you have wood 3D, cut wood 3D cutting? Uh, we do. We have it on the CNC mill uh, in the back. So we have a shop bot in the back. And then we actually have three CNCs. But the one we would probably cut wood on is the one in the back of shop bot. It's got about a two and a half by three and a half foot bed, um, if that means anything to you. Uh, and then we also have strong ties with uh, both the machine shop down in the engineering building and also in the art building. So we're able to access some of those other uh, machine shops and tools if, uh, if we really needed to. But obviously this is really nice to have a dedicated space specifically to entrepreneurship and specifically to product development so that you're not competing either with art students who are working on art projects and taking up the machine and the machine time there and then engineering students who are you know constantly running the machines and that whole space is really just dedicated to engineering um this i see another question from jonathan i'm pursuing an mba in the fall this is offered to graduate students. Absolutely. We've had some of our best ideas started by graduate students. Uh, the program is actually open to undergraduate students, uh, graduate students, staff and faculty. So uh, any so even if you wanted to start a company with a professor or start wanted to start a company with a staff member at SDSU, you could also leverage that 
uh, or leverage the resources that way. The only requirement is that one of your core founding team members must be either a student, staff, or faculty at SDSU. So even if you're graduating soon, if you have somebody who's a little bit younger or have a professor in mind or have a you know a faculty or a staff member in mind, then you can also start and leverage, start a company there or apply to this launchpad with them and then leverage the resources for as long as one of those three people are active at SDSU. And then I see another question from uh, Joya. If you just have an idea, where do you start or go to? Do you need to do the research beforehand with you guys? So uh, that's a great question. And we do not require you to do anything except for submit an application. And on the application, we do ask you to do a little bit of research. So uh, most of the ideas that we take on, uh, the people who are applying with those ideas, they haven't done any work. They haven't you know, hired an engineer usually. They haven't built a product. They don't even have necessarily an idea of what the product is gonna look like. They, I mean, they probably have some idea of what they want it to look like, but um, they haven't really written much of it down. They just have an idea that looks that, that should exist and they know it should exist. So if you go to our website and you take a look at our application, it'll take, it'll ask you to break your idea down into more of a business pitch format. So instead of just saying like Uber for bagels or something like that, instead it'll ask you to list the customer, the problem statement, the solution statement, and then also get, do a competitive analysis. So it takes a little bit of research to actually justify those things with you know information or with research, uh, with numbers, with statistics, and then also do a competitive uh, landscape research. So it takes a little bit of research to apply to the Zip Launchpad, um, but it sets you off on a much better foot and it gives us a much better idea of the uh, application that you're submitting. And it's actually not just us, it's a selection committee that the Zip Launchpad incorporates with community members. So we have entrepreneurs, once again, um, investors, and then also Zip Launchpad alumni, uh, staff and community members, all that are basically, uh, bringing in hopefully the best ideas of the Zip Launchpad applicants. And then we also have resources available. If you uh, struggle with that research resource or if you wanna improve your application, we have office hours available at the beginning of every application cycle for you to uh, meet with a Zip staff member and improve your application. So uh, there's really like a lot of help available. It's just about going and taking advantage of it and you know putting in the work to basically take that idea give you a solid base and then we'll take it from there. Um, but that's, you know, not too much to ask compared to the resources that you can get out of the Zip Launchpad. Yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. And actually, um, this is a good time. Does anybody else have any other questions about the Zip Launchpad uh, that they'd like to ask before I move on? Um, if you apply to when, um, oh, that's a good question. So uh, if I applied, when would I start? So uh, for one, for I'll, I'll talk first about the Zip Launchpad. If you apply for the Zip Launchpad, uh, we have open application cycles uh, three times per year. So that's fall, spring, and summer semesters. And it'll usually be open at the beginning of each semester for about the first two to three weeks or so. So if you're interested in applying, uh, you always will apply at the beginning of the semester, and then if you miss the application date, you'll have to wait till the next semester. So we do it in a semesterly cohort format. Um, and then uh, for one of and then so one of the resources that is available in the Zip Launchpad um, is a paid internship. Maybe that's what you're talking about, Jonathan. Yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. So uh, so if you so obviously the best way to get involved with the Zip Launchpad is going to be applying with a, with your own idea. It's just the best way to get the best experience. However, another phenomenal way to get a really good experience out of the Zip Launchpad is to apply for the paid internship role. So on our website, you might see a tab called paid internship. Each semester we have a paid internship fair and the teams in the program are always recruiting new interns uh, to help with the very, very early stage product development goals and company development goals. Um, and uh, basically, all of the teams in the program have access to hire or uh, hire an intern for $1,000, uh, a 70-hour internship. Um, if you are recruited for one of those uh, out of the paid internship fair, uh, you'll be hired through SDSU. So it's good for international students and just about anybody on campus. Um, 
and then you'll be under the wing or under the directive of the startup. Uh, and after the hiring process completes, it'll maybe be like uh, it can be anywhere from two to four weeks, I think, something like that. Um, then you'll be hired under the direction of the team and uh, you'll actually be paid to be an intern for one of the startup teams. So you can also get involved just by becoming a, uh, basically just by working for one of the startups in the very, very early stages. And you'll kind of get a little bit of taste of what it means and what it's like to go through entrepreneurship and you know work with a startup in a very, very, very early stage. And you also get paid for it too. Uh, at least, you know, for 70 hours. And then after that, if you want to continue working on the startup and you like the idea, then that's also an absolute, or that's an available option as well. Cool, I hope that answered your question. Are there any other questions before I move on? Cool, and also hopefully you guys have a better idea of what the Zip Launchpad does today. Uh, than maybe you did at the beginning of this and hopefully you know you guys will consider applying it's a lot it's a lot to gain and not a lot to lose i will say uh cool all right so why prototype why do you guys think we do it what's the point why even bother with it why not just go straight to an engineer and have an engineer build whatever you want them to build What do you think, guys? To have an idea of what the product can look like. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good reason. Any other reasons? Why wouldn't you go to an engineer right now? Get an no, idea. I'd say to see if it's actually possible to produce it. Yeah, to see if it's actually possible. 100%. Is it even possible? No idea. Um, yeah, I mean, these are all good answers. Uh, the way oh, money. <laughs> What's right? that? Oh, I was saying, what about money? What about money, right? Do you guys have the money to do that right now? Yeah, to oh. figure out also what it's what it's going to cost to make. And since you get to go through the process of everything, of ordering the materials and building it yourself. Yeah, to see what it's going to cost to make and also uh, to see what it might sell for, right? Like, who knows? Could be a lot, could be a little, um, but it's kind of hard to tell um, without a prototype. Well, yeah, like how much time does it take and what, what kind of assets are you going to need in order to produce it? It's better seen when you're prototyping. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can kind of figure that stuff out. You want to figure all that stuff out in the prototyping stage because otherwise you don't know what it's worth or what's going to go wrong, right? So um, I, chalk, I chalk all this stuff up into one word, or maybe you could say this is two words, but de-risking. Your prototype in order to de-risk. Um, in my view, every, every ounce of, uh, you know, effort you put into a prototype or into a short term production run is basically is all validation effort to validate or, you know, identify risks that are going to hurt you in the long term. All right. And so that can be on both the, the engineering side and the business side, just so you know, as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about both. So, uh, the product development process that you know, you're you guys may be familiar with, uh, and that you kind of like can gauge intuitively is you got an idea, um, you basically invest into that idea, uh, your time, your energy, your effort, uh, your personal savings, your friends, maybe you hire or you get a round of funding from friends and family, uh, or maybe you even find institutional investment on the idea that you have. Um, and then you go and you build, you hire engineers, you set up manufacturing, you hire web or app developers, you pay for servers, you go to market, and then you get a big success or a big ROI on that initial investment. So what this process here never really captures today is the risk element that is involved with the idea. So believe it or not, once you have an idea um, you know, set in stone, it's actually not too hard to go from your uh, product idea straight to uh, market. So you can take some, you know, wacky, crazy idea that you think is valuable and you can pay a bunch of engineers to build it. And then it's not that crazy of a technical risk these days to go from idea to actual implementation. Um, however, the big risk actually uh, a lot of the time lies in the idea and whether there's a market for that idea in the world. 
Um, and so I'm going to talk a lot today about basically uh, the product risk from the idea standpoint, how we move through product ideas at uh, Zip Launchpad startups. So I want to illustrate three different scenarios to you guys. Uh, the, so the first one is kind of what you just saw. It's like you have your idea. From that idea, you go into an initial product concept. Whoops. And then um, from that initial product concept, you skip any kind of validation effort. And you just kind of, you take you, like all that investment from either friends or family, from institutional investments, or just whatever personal savings you have, and you pay engineers to go out and build it. Um, then you develop it, yeah, you develop, they go out and develop it, and then you get a big ROI on that initial investment. Um, and this is like the overnight success story that you see in magazines or stories, or, you know, you see in snippets or something like that, or somebody's bio, maybe something like that. Um, and it never really captures the entire story ever. It's like the overnight success story that is uh, so rare that it really just shouldn't be talked about so uh, blatantly, in my opinion. Um, but the real or so, and then scenario number two here is uh, you have your initial product concept and you come up with your val or, and then you take that initial product concept and you go out and you uh, perform some kind of validation effort. So if your initial product concept is a certain type of app, you go out and you prove uh, that that exact app is valuable. You raise some money or you find investment based on that initial validation effort, and then you go out and develop it, and then you get an ROI on that initial investment. Um, and I call, I like to think of this as striking gold or winning the lottery, because you walked out uh, with the product that you walked in with. So uh, it's very, very rare to go out or to come up with a product idea, go out and test it, and then get 100% success rate your first try. The reality is that a lot of people will probably not like the idea, and you're probably going to have to uh, just take that feedback and pivot your idea. And that's path number three. So you come up with your idea, you come up with your initial product concept, you go out um, and you go into validation effort. You maybe get some bad feedback and then iterate your product idea so that it basically mitigates the bad feedback and looks like, uh, and you know, captures the good feedback. And then you iteratively do this until you have a product that you can uh, basically, you know, predictably confirm that people are interested in and would pay for and would like. And then with that information, you raise investments or funding, or you de-risk your own personal savings that you might use to develop the app and then find an ROI on that initial investment. Now, this is the largest majority of high growth companies that we see. It's the most repeatable and scalable process. And it's the least risky. I mean, you're not meaning you're not making bets on what people will or will not like. You have that information captured from your validation effort and from your iterated concepts. And so, this is what we usually recommend to the startups in the program. And this is the philosophy that we use to drive investment of resources into the startups in the program as well. Um, and then maybe this is a good. Uh, another way to showcase the philosophy as well. So traditional waterfall says, okay, here's my idea. And now let's figure out all of the things I need to do to build up that idea and then go out and build it. Um, and then, and this is very similar to path one. So in agile prototyping, uh, which is, you know, the modern philosophy of product development, uh, what you actually do is you start with idea one and then you come up with idea two, you come up with idea three, you come up with idea four, and they all might solve a similar problem like transportation, um, but in different ways and with different you know, pros and cons and different benefits. And you go through and you iteratively move and validate the different features of your different ideas until you find the most valuable idea that you can build a product on or that you can build a business on. Um, and so what you gain by doing this is a actual understanding of which ideas are good and which ideas are bad. And by I mean good or bad, I mean successful or unsuccessful in launching a business with, you know, basically understanding what people will or will not pay for. Um, and then you can move into the ones that are good. And then also by doing this, if a competitor comes up and tries to basically compete with you or steal the ideas that you have or something like that, then you'll have an idea of what they're doing if they've used or if they're capitalizing on one of these ideas that you already tested. 
So it strengthens your overall company and your overall understanding of your own idea by moving through these different idea landscapes and landing on the one that uh, is going to be most successful. All right, does anybody have any questions on that stuff before moving to a little exercise here? Questions? We're good. Cool. All right. So, uh, so I'll need everybody to participate, um, which uh, and you will and you will need to turn on your camera just to show off a drawing. And uh, what we're gonna do is I'll need one person to uh, just give me an idea that doesn't exist, and then we're all we're all gonna draw the idea. Okay. So uh, just uh, so just to reiterate, you want everybody to kind of think of an idea that doesn't exist for a product I mean, or a service that doesn't exist or? I need one idea and just then one. we're all gonna draw the same idea. Okay, so, you guys. So I can just do mine. I mean, this is what I, this is pretty much what I pitched from the, the elevator pitch. I mean, it's, it's more of a service. It's not really a product, but um, so I don't know if it, Will that still work or does it have to be like a product so that they can like draw it? I don't know. Tell us the idea. Tell us the idea. So pretty much what it One is, time. is it's a way, it's a way to um, find cool and interesting places for the most part in the city that you already live in. So like, for example, say you live in New York city and you commute to work every day, passing by a bunch of different bars, restaurants, shops. Um, but this app would pretty much let you know, so it's an app uh, of cool and interesting places that um, are recommended by other people. So let me stop um, you right there. I'm going to stop right there, David. Uh, so, uh, Doug, an app is not going to work. Uh, I mean, we could do that, but I think for the sake of this, for the sake of for product, let's do a let's do a physical product, uh, okay. just because that's what we're hoping to help you guys with this this yeah. semester. So everybody, try to come up with a. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Doug. Thanks, Doug, no David. Worries. For putting it out there, I you know entrepreneurship is about showing up, right? Uh, um, Cameron, you guys, uh, something? yeah, so one. A lot of people are building camper vans, and uh, let me give me one rule before before you. Get to, so this this idea cannot exist today. It has to be a, a novel, brand new idea. Um, I I, well, I think it. You think it is? Go go ahead, Cameron. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You think Her. it is? You think it is? Okay. Yeah. Everybody's building these vans on their own by watching videos and stuff. Um, nobody I've seen out there is actually doing a hand us the dimensions in a C 3D program with AR. You take your van and you're able to set up your, your drawings within your AR program and it'll allow you to put them into your van visually. And then from there, you can order from the company those cabinets CNC cut and all you have to do is bolt them in and there'll be a set of instructions on how to bolt them in. I worry that that's still an app. <laughs> that's my only worry. Um, well, it's a conglomeration of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It but is, it's still a yeah. service. It's still a service more than a, a physical, physical. Go ahead, Shelby, what do you got? Uh, I'm thinking of physical product, exactly. Physical. This is what I pitched. Um, I pitched um, a cosplay kit or a costume kit, um, basically for people who are like nerds at cons who want to put like a superhero costume together, but don't necessarily like want to buy something that's cheap from China, but want to make something themselves without it being too hard, they could buy this kit and kind of learn how to sew and pattern through this kit and they can have like a- EYI cosplay. cosplay kit. Yeah. That works for me. Doug, that work for you? Um, that works for me. So what's, tell me what's new about it first before we get started. Like what's the, what's the thing that doesn't exist today? That can't, that is not unable to be done today. Um, well, what's, um, new about it is it would be like, um, say it'd be like I Ikea or Home Chef or in the sense of everything's there, you kind of have to put it together. But, um, what people aren't doing today is, uh, they're printing, they're not, people are, patterns come in pieces of paper that you have to cut out yourself. And the new thing would be being to print out the actual pattern that you would need to cut out on the fabric. Um, cool, okay, so this is, uh, 
I mean, okay, so yeah, to give to give Cameron some credit, it's definitely like these are all like ecosystem ideas, but we'll take it. We'll we'll go with this one. Uh, so sum it up, sum it up in one sentence for me. Um clothing or a costume you can make yourself uh without um all the problems <laughs> in, in doing so um all the i you know I, I hate it when my products have problems and i love it when they have no problems it's fine <laughs> uh, but they always tend to have some kind of problem with them um so yeah i'll take it then it's kind of like a uh it's it's like a ship to home do it yourself cosplay costume kit yes basically okay cool so uh everybody on the zoom uh what i want you to do is draw what you think this product is going to look like and then at the very end we're all going to compare our drawings and i want you to include uh whatever features that you imagine that this product will entail and draw a showcase of what you are, what you imagine those features will look like. And then at the end, we'll all compare drawings, compare notes and see what we came up with. And how long do we have? Um, and we'll give it about five minutes or so. Okay, sounds good. And your drawings don't have to be good. They just have to showcase to your best ability uh, what you imagine the feature is gonna look like. Got it. Can I show mine or should I wait till the end of the five minutes? Uh, we'll wait till the end of the five minutes and then we'll all show. That way you don't influence anybody else's designs. Yeah, all sure. designs. In the meantime, just draw another feature, something else you think uh, this would include. Yeah.
cool. We'll give it maybe like one more minute. Cool. All right. So to share your idea, um, whoever wants to go first, go right ahead. Just go ahead and uh, hold your drawing up to the screen. Make sure you hold it up so everybody can see when you're speaking and then uh, just describe your idea or your describe your drawings. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm the teacher. Luis, you want to go first? Yeah, um, so I guess I, I'm not too familiar with the world of cosplay and all that, but what I'm assuming is maybe um, I've seen a lot of these like crate boxes going around to the past years that they would like send to your house and you would get like lotions or something. Mm -hmm. So I would assume maybe something along the lines of that where you order, um, I guess like Dollar the shape. product from a website and it comes in a fancy little box kind of like the makeup boxes where it's like this very like nice material um, and then inside you get a bunch of like all the pieces that you get to put it together like the instructions for it your little spools of thread your needles um, all the stuff you may may need just to get started um, start building the cosplay piece and it comes into like a box like this and maybe you can come with like a little mirror so you can just in case yeah. you have something. I don't know. That's, That's kind of yeah. beginning what idea. Are, what, are, what are those things in the box there? Oh, oh I, I, I don't know. Uh, just like pieces of fabric. That's what I tried um, doing pieces of fabric, some like little metallic pieces that might come on like the costume. Uh, and then like the spools and threads and then any little buttons and whatnot that you might need i guess that's kind of what i am envisioning for now nice yep looks good cool who else has got uh some drawings to show um for me the way i did it was kind of the same thing but a little bit different in that i kind of had a more like that it was kind of finished already so i just drew it on my ipad i'm not gonna you see it so mine is like more like if this was all the if this was just material and that um you could kind of just cut this part out so you could get like different layouts like you could have like different items like a hat maybe a cape um and then here like inside would also be like just like some random materials here you would have like your sewing machines scissors uh it would come with spools of thread and then, you know, maybe like different, like a couple different um, materials as well for different items, whatever that would be. Cool. And then does that say instructions on that little? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, and then also like a page, like a booklet that kind of like not directly tells you what to do, but kind of gives you ideas and inspirations for what the item could be because it could possibly be done different ways so that it's not just in case it's like it ends up being a super popular product i'm sure like a thing uh like with cosplay is that you wouldn't want a bunch of people in the exact same outfit as you i assume so right you kind of want to make it your own cool nice all right who else has got a few let's do a few more who else has got a drawing to show off i didn't want to come i don't know if i can get it to show or not there it yeah, this is uh, your uh, your virtual background. Oh yeah, well, I'll give up on it then. Basically, what I drew was from cloth. With oh, no, no, you should turn off your uh, your virtual background so we can see the drawing. We want to see the drawing for sure. Um, I rather I I rather not. Thank you. Okay. Well. All right. No worries. Can you hold it up, maybe, so we can see it potentially? Hold it in yeah, front of your body. Hold it in front of your body. Yeah, that might work too. But yeah, still can't see it. Sure. Yeah, still can't. Does that see it. work? Nope. No, nope. no, nope. it's not gonna work. It's because it's on white paper. Um, 
Let me see if I can put my green screen up. Maybe that'll help. Okay. In the meantime, and, um, and just to let everybody uh, uh, here know, if you're trying to get into the rec meeting, you're at the wrong uh, place. Go look at your email, and um, there's a, a different link. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Stephanie. It looked like you had a drawing to show up. Uh, yeah, mine was kind of similar. I kind of did it like I broke it down. So like this is what like the initial package would be. It'd be like a box that you receive and have like the company logo on the outside. And then these would be like the contents inside. So I kind of thought of it as like a Lego kit where it'd be like mini little packages that you would receive. So this would be like an accessories, like a tops, a bottom, and maybe like excess other materials that would go for the costume. And then this is like an instruction manual guide. And then I also thought of like a mini sewing kit just in case people didn't have the material. So I kind of saw it as like a Lego box. Like you get the outside with all the cool patterns and designs and on the inside. They're all like little bags of like um, fabric and stuff you need. And then a manual just in case you need reference and then a little sewing kit. Cool, nice. All right, let's do like two or three more. Who else has got one? Tanya, do you want to show yours off? Does anybody else have a drawing to show off? Oh, Cameron. Oh. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Nice, there we go. There it goes. Cool, yeah, do you want to show, uh, explain it to us? All right. Yeah, I was just trying to turn my mic on. Okay, there we go. Well, what it was is kind of came off the idea of what I learned with leather working. And uh, Tandy does a cutout, pre-cutouts, but he said his was gonna be different with the fact it was gonna be just like a outline on, on the cloth for you to cut out. So I did a large sheet of cloth with an outline. I would assume maybe the, the um, outlines would be set for colors, but you could use the extra cloth to maybe customize things. Um, and I assume there would be like instructions or some general concept of what to do in sewing for somebody new, maybe some inexpensive beginner tools like a cheap set of cloth scissors. Um, so maybe some high quality thread because I mentioned a higher quality product versus like maybe cheap Chinese costumes. Um, and I, I would think that maybe there would be also a possibility for like an upsell like you get your kit and then they'll send you really cool looking pictures of stuff that didn't come with the kit that you can buy for it because that seems to be in that community and go over pretty well they yeah, buy like 90 dollar yeah. plastic toys that they can spend 75 dollars on decking out my brother's girlfriend does this yeah, <laughs> so i would assume you could easily upgrade them um in, within that community they're they're used to that kind of marketing tactic and have accepted it yeah, it would be a drawing of what you were imagining. Um, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Hey, Cameron, um, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of echo. Okay, cool. Thank you. There's a little bit of echo coming from the mic you might have. All right, so um, unless anybody has one that they want to show off really badly, I don't want to exclude anybody out. Oh, my goodness, what am I doing? Let me show you guys what I made real quick as well. Show us. And then Tanya, maybe yours too. So yeah, I, I so I had a similar like you know just regular box that you guys might have thought of. Um, I figured since it was a cosplay thing and they love LEDs, I imagine putting some kind of LEDs inside the box for when they open it, and basically like a treasure chest opening up almost. Um, and then very very uh, similar, uh, I had like you know cutouts or these would be like stencils of both clothes and then also like patterns. And these are some things that you could potentially download, I imagine, or some that are included, uh, as well as like shapes and whatnot. You know, the sewing kit, definitely a common theme. I think you could say a common thread through all of the ideas. <laughs> I'll uh, see myself out. And then uh, I also imagined, uh, yeah, an instruction manual with like the idea that you, it would show you how to shoot and take a picture of your costume as well, because that's gotta be part of the fun. Um, Tanya, do you want to use it real quick? All right, let's see if you can see mine. It's um, it's a kit and it was going to be in this uh, uh, like a, a cool shaped box 
where it has the different uh, pieces to the box and it has uh, all sorts of things. It's gonna have like cosmetics, the sewing, the, you know, the pattern, actually a, a thing for repairing the costume because apparently they break a lot, I would imagine. And, um, and then all of this would be in um, a box that has, uh, that the, you can re reuse. So a cool looking kind of cool shaped box is what I was thinking. Cool. Um, like dollar shaped nice. clubs. Yeah. And yeah. each time it's been a different one. I don't know. Yeah, it's actually kind of a cool idea. How fun. This is a fun project. Like everybody's is so different, you know? I mean, similar, but different. Well, yeah, so let's 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 gauge that. So everybody in the room, do you guys think everybody drew the same drawing? Do you give me a thumbs up if you think everybody drew the same drawing or give me a thumbs down if you think they were, you know, different for the most part? I would say for the most part, kind of, I don't know. There's some similarities. I think I'm seeing more either medium, medium thumbs or thumbs downs. Um, and then I got one thumbs up. Um, and yeah, I would, I would actually say that uh, a lot of people kind of interpreted their, their idea diff the idea differently. Um, and we got quite a few, you know, a, a good variety of different ideas or different drawings out of the same idea. I love the idea of yours with the light. What's that? I loved your idea how it, it would, you know, when they opened it, it was like, pa -pa, with the light. Oh, yeah, I think that would be so cool. I love unboxing stuff. Totally. Um, and so uh, the really the point that I want to drive here is that, you know, when you guys talk about your idea with somebody, you don't really know how they're going to take it. They may or may not understand what you're saying, um, and they may or may not be interpreting it in a completely different way than what you're saying. Um, so in product development, if you are building a product, it's your job to figure out what somebody is hearing. Um, and a prototype makes it much, much easier to get page so Cameron like for your idea uh you you telling it to me is one thing but if you had drawn a picture of it and kind of show me what you were imagining I probably would have had a lot more context and understanding about what you actually maybe were building or what you were imagining um so prototyping uh, makes this process of communicating ideas much much easier and so uh the way that I sort of operate and run the lab and, and you know when I ask this question what is a prototype uh, the answer I gave is a communication tool. It's a way to basically convey and communicate an idea much, much more effectively than just wor with words. Um, and you can get a much better response. You can get a much better, have a much better conversation about an idea. You can have a much better uh, conversation grounded in uh, what you actually will be looking at when a product arrives. So uh, real quick, I'm gonna run through a couple of last slides here to get you guys out of here. But so this is the product development process that we use at the Zip Launchpad, or it's not identical, but it's very similar. I pulled this from a great resource called the Illustrated Guide to Product Development. But we basically start out with problem research. This might look familiar to some of you guys. Um, and then you go into proof of concept prototype. And the proof of concept prototype is uh, both, it has two routes, one in business and one in engineering. On the business side, you're building out renderings, wireframes, looks like prototypes, and you're trying to understand, will this thing sell? Can I build a business on this product idea concept? And then on the engineering side, you're using those wireframes and those look like prototypes to work with an engineer and determine, is this physically possible to build? Can this actually be done? What are the technical specifications going to look like for this product? What are the logistics gonna look like? What is the product spec actually gonna say? And all of this is to drive towards an engineering prototype or an MVP, a product that's been val validated on a business level and confirmed that it will sell with customers and also validated on an engineering level, meaning it will be possible to build and it is, we are capable of building it, you know, as, uh, as a human race, basically, it's like it can be engineered. Um, because obviously you can come up with an idea like uh, like hovercrafts or flying cars that you know don't they're not physically possible right but they obviously would sell. Um, so it's these are the two tangential paths that you want to use uh, to get to an engineering prototype. It's been prototyped from a business level and prototyped from a uh, engineering level. So uh, the reason that we use this process is because this process here, these, these early tasks of prototyping from an engineering level and prototyping from a business level are extremely free and cheap. Um, it's a lean and iterative process where you get to learn a lot about whether the idea is gonna work or not. 
and then once you confirm it, uh, that's when you move into all of the expensive stuff that is related to, that, that has to do with scaling up the idea, mass producing the idea, and basically requires investment. So you wanna de-risk your business risks and de-risk your product risk before you actually put all of that money or time or effort, you know, investment can come in all of these forms uh, into scaling up the idea that you're working with. So what can a product look like? Or what, sorry, what can a prototype look like? Uh, so it can be a sketch, it can be a 3D print or a 3D render, it can be a landing page, uh, it can be an interactive model. Uh, Cameron, it can be an augmented reality uh, view of what the product will look like in your, in your space or in your shop. Um, or in your house. It can be a manual experience. It can be something that you hand build or you hand carve right away uh, just to get something off uh, into production or in, you know, into reality. Uh, it can be a demo video that explains the product and what the product is gonna be a do, or sorry, what the product is going to do. Um, so it can look like a lot of different things. And the only thing that changes is the fidelity scale of the prototype. So uh, you know what you guys all just built just a few moments ago, that was a prototype. That's a first iteration of a prototype. You know, you wrote, you brought it out of your head, out of your idea, put it on paper. Um, boom, you have a prototype of the idea that you may have been imagining. Whatever product you were imagining, well, in this case, it was a cosplay DIY box. That's a great step in prototyping the, the box. And then what you can do over time is basically improve the scale or representation of the product. So you can include actual, you know, pictures of the cloth. You can include actual designs of the stencils. You can include actual um, photos of what the end use product is going to look like or renders of what the end use product is gonna look like. Um, but it starts off with maybe just a sketch. So I wanna show some examples like this of this. Um, this is one of my favorites, whoops. Uh, bubble hotels in Joshua Tree. So uh, this company, uh, run by Nathan Resnick, a local entrepreneur here, uh, he built he put this demo video together, and it just looks so crazy cool. Um, and this is a great example of a prototype. Um, this guy raised eight hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars in a Kickstarter on an Indiegogo. I want you to pay close attention to this, to what the product looks like in this, in this video. Can you turn up the volume a little? Oh, yeah, it's just, it's like, it's like hype music. Oh, got it. I don't know if it sounds okay. So you can see here that none of this stuff actually exists right now. I don't know if you guys can tell, but all the, the mountains in the background, that's all fake. All of the, the, the patio here, this is all just 3D modeled and 3D rendered. This hot tub this is not a real hot tub. This is all just like a mock-up. It's basically like a 3D render and yet it looks so good and it looks so cool. Um, and this was probably made for, you know, maybe a few thousand dollars um, and yet produced or, you know, validated a, probably a multi-million dollar business. Um, and so the barrier to entry for getting a prototype is getting extremely low. And this is a great example of one of those. But, you know, this is just a little bit higher fidelity than a sketch on paper. Um, and then just taking some action, like putting this thing on uh, bubble hotels is all it takes to validate the business and, you know, get started on it. Um, another one that I like to showcase is, whoops, um, is mint.com. Have you guys ever heard of mint.com? It's like a financial, a financial tool. Um, basically, they started with just a landing page. And on their landing page, they had uh, this short little uh, excerpt here. 
Uh, and they went on to all sorts of radio shows, uh, just talking about how there really should be a mobile based financial tool. And they basically in four months were skeptical about whether they should start the idea, but they got, I think something like 20 to 30,000 people to, to show up on the website and sign up to learn more or sign up to, um, to be notified when they go live. Right. That's what it says here. Um, and so it was that evidence that actually allowed them to raise money to go out and build the app and develop the business. And um, they used the same philosophy through many of their product launches later on. But uh, the point is to basically put a mock-up or a prototype together and then go out and validate it and understand whether people actually want it or not, if they're working on the right idea or not, and then pivot into the right idea. So how to get a prototype. Uh, or how to create a prototype. Number one, this is the easiest one. Everybody can do it. You guys just did it a few minutes ago. Do it yourself. Just sketch something down. Um, every single one of you is, take, is capable of taking whatever idea you have in your head and just drawing out what you think the actual product, whether it's hardware, software, or a service is going to look like. Sketch it, brochure it, spec it out, put together a benefits comparison chart or a product specification chart and just understand, start, start nailing down what the actual product spec is going to look like. Uh, here's the kicker on this one. If you go out and you hire an engineer to build whatever product you're imagining, the engineer is going to look at you and say, what do you, what do you want me to build? Like, what, what am I even supposed to build? And then they're going to look at you to tell them what to build. Um, and then you're going to have the same communication issue that I talked about just a minute ago, where you are talking about an idea and they have a different idea in mind. So you're either trusting your idea or you're miscommunicating an idea potentially. And the point is that a sketch as simple as this one is going to uh, communicate that idea far, far more effectively and allow you to communicate with any engineer, designer or developer that you might work with to actually build the product unless you, if you don't do it yourself. Uh, so the next way to uh, how to create a prototype is to outsource it. So you can hire or partner with an engineer or developer or designer um, as a co-founder or uh, somebody to work with you with stock options, potentially that's an option or to basically invest in their work into the community or to the company or the product. SDSU has uh, over 3000 engineering students. We have over 900 computer science students. We have over 300 graphic design students. All of these students can help you with basically either visualizing, prototyping, or developing the very, very early stages of your idea and your design. Um, and why not go work with one of them? They're you know alongside you here at SDSU, SDSU um, and they're available on campus. You can find them. Uh, and then another way to do it is with Fiverr, Freelancer, Upwork, or traditional product development companies. Um, and the cost to get one of those renders or something like that is just getting lower and lower and lower year after year. Um, so there's also free resource, resources available. So there's websites like Thingiverse or GrabCAD or templates online for both apps and websites that you can use. Um, these are all places uh, where you can get a predefined product or a predefined template or at least a model or something that's close to what you're imagining. And you can use these as either inspiration or other re resource or a resource to build off of um, and then continue to develop your product idea with. Um, the SDSU library has a program called the Build It Lab where you can get free 3D printing. And then we are also helping uh, this semester with free 3D design rendering and 3D printing for product ideas that you, you guys might have in this class. And that's the resource that I want to tell you guys more about. So that's the, that's uh, basically the last free resource. It's going to be us, the Zip Launchpad. We're going to be able to help you guys out as well. So, and then the last way to create your own prototype is, in my opinion, this is the hard way. You could call it the hard way or the long way, um, depending on who you are. Uh, you can learn how to use the tools of prototyping yourself or the tools of development and design yourself. So uh, you can go onto YouTube or Udacity, Coursera, uh, Community College, or, or, SDS, or even uh, take a class at SDSU. And you could, for example, learn how to use 3D product design tools like SolidWorks, Autodesk, uh, Tinkercad, or Adobe Dimension, and you can learn all of the tools yourself or for app and web design, you can learn how to use Figma, Adobe XD, Adalo or Bubble.io, which are actually a little bit easier. Um, and uh, basically learn the skills yourself to develop your own products or, or your own apps. Um, however, 
uh, it's, in my opinion, much more efficient to work with somebody who is experienced in the skill set of development of this technical developments um, and just leverage what they've already gone to school to learn. Um, they've already taken, you know, two years and have maybe three years of experience with these things and uh, they'll be able to get up to speed and get to an initial product that maybe you can agree on your imagining uh, much, much quicker. So uh, how to use the zip launchpad resource. So this is the resource that we're making available to you guys uh, for this semester. So uh, on our website, uh, let's just go through real quick. We have uh, a place where you can sign up to get a free 3D render. So uh, what you guys see on the screen here, the thermo flask, this little charging brick, and then also uh, this hand sanitizer tool. These are all examples of work that we're able to support you guys for free with this semester. Uh, so if you have a physical product idea, um, then what you can do is you can go to the Zip Launchpad website. So the Zip Launchpad website, and then you're going to click on resources. And then you're going to click on work with the lab. And the lab is uh, what I run, right? And uh, where we can help you. And this is where I interface with everybody from the Zip Launchpad teams and also everybody from the management 358. So uh, there's a few things that you can get here. The, the most important one is though, is the prototyping service for non-ZIP student teams. Uh, so this is for you guys here in Management 358. What you wanna do is click on reserve a prototyping slot and that'll take you to a Google Sheet. And this is where you can sign up to receive a free 3D print, or sorry, a free 3D design, 3D render, and optionally a 3D print. So uh, we're gonna do, we do all this basically uh, one week ahead of time. So we ask that you sign up, uh, you know, if, if today is the week of 315, we ask you to sign up basically one week uh, ahead of time. So for the next week, and we can support up to eight teams per week. We'll probably change this actually to 12 teams per week. So don't feel about basically not uh, losing a spot. However, when it comes close to finals week, um, that's when we can only support a maximum of 12. So if we get a mad rush during finals week, we will cut it off at 12. And can you give us that link again, Doug, for the? Yeah, absolutely. So on the, so here, I'll, I'll put this page or this link. Perfect. In the chat for you guys. Perfect. Um, and then you can find it, of course, from our website under resources and work with the lab. Perfect. Um, and then I'll, I'll make sure to send this out to um, Tanya as well. So she has a copy of this as well. But basically you'll sign up for on this Google sheet here. And then on intern, we'll send you a link to meet for a design meeting. What we're gonna do is ask you to have sketches of your idea exactly like you made today. And then we'll take your sketches and we'll basically, you know, improve them uh, in a much, in a, in a professional way to make them look much more like uh, what you see here. Basically a professional end use or end concept looking uh, design with photos with a 3D file and a 3D render. So a photorealistic render of the idea you're imagining. Um, it looks really, really good in front of a customer. It communicates the idea hopefully very, very well and hopefully you can use it to validate a business just like Bubble Hotels did. Awesome. Cool. Um, that I, that's, oh, oh, look, I was sorry. just gonna say I'm, uh, oh, I'm putting that link in uh, in Canvas right now. So you'll be able to see that under the work, uh, the module that says prototyping. So you can sign up there in case you don't have it. And um, I believe also, uh, Doug, do you also have the, uh, I don't know if you're going to be sharing the, you might've already shared them with me, but uh, the PowerPoints uh, slides. Uh, I will, I'll share that with you as well. I'll do that right after this, okay? Awesome, perfect. So cool. any, Questions that we have um, from uh, for, for, for Doug for now? If not, Doug, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no worries. Actually, I was just going to run through these. This is all I have left. Um, uh, these are some of the companies that we've formed in the past or that have started and are continuing to operate in the past. Um, maybe some of them are familiar to you guys. Hopefully you guys are next. And that was it. Thank you, guys. Do you guys have any questions that I can answer before heading out? Can we, one off, can we do like a breakout room and bring up an idea and ask some questions and see if it's something that would be covered. That's up to Doug. I've got to go to my other class, but. Um, I can't. So uh, on the Zip Launchpad website here where it says work with the lab, 
There's also a little button here that says meet with Doug. Oh, perfect. And that'll take you to my Calendly uh, where you can book a 3D, uh, a 30 minute meeting. Um, and if you'd like longer than that, feel free to just book two 30 minute meetings. Um, but go ahead and book any one of those and I'll be available to help you guys for engineering and product questions. Yeah, and if you uh, look and see, uh, just if you go to the class now, uh, there's a little prototyping um, there in the modules. There's that link uh, there. I have a couple of videos, my videos, and then I'll put the video from uh, from tonight as soon as it's done, um, you know, as soon as I'm done rendering it. So, cool. in fact, I'll stop the recording right now. Thank you very much, Doug. Do you want to uh, take take us out? Is there anything else you'd like to share with with everyone? No, that's that's all I got. Hopefully, I've convinced you guys that the Zip Launchpad uh, has some you know value. If you guys want to pursue a business idea, you know you got a lot to gain and not a lot to lose. Um, and then hopefully, you guys are walking away with a little bit more of an understanding of product development. If you guys have any questions, feel feel free to just email me or once again click that link. Meet with me uh, for thirty minutes via Calendly. Um, and hopefully, we'll see you guys in the Zip Launchpad sometime soon. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much. That was amazing. I'm going to go ahead and stop the